Over the last few years, we've seen a lot more companies releasing their own NVMe drives. A lot of these companies that have in the past created a lot of really great enclosures for NVMEs, SSDs, and hard drives are now releasing their own NVMe drives to put into those enclosures, which is really cool. And Oracle actually sent over their newest IG740 Pro. Uh, they sent over the two terabyte model. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this thing unboxed. We're going to talk about some specs. We're gonna peel back the label, see what kind of hardware is actually on the NVMe drive. We'll go ahead and do some testing as I usually do. I'll do like a real world test where I'll move a file over. And then we'll also do some synthetic tests. We'll compare it to a bunch of drives that I've looked at in the past and we'll see how it does for the price point and how it does for a relatively new NVMe drive to the market. So first we'll just do a quick unboxing. These NVMe drives usually don't have too much going on inside. So from the box here, we can see I have the two terabyte model. They advertise read speeds up to 7,400. It is a PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive. On the back, we have a few more specs. And honestly, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get this open. And now if we go ahead and look at this, we have the usual assortment of items. So we have the manual, which will usually give a little bit more information in terms of specs. It'll also tell us how to put the um, heat shield on, which is kind of nice. They have a heat spreader that they include. A lot of companies are doing this now. And I prefer this for the most part, because sometimes if you have an integrated heat spreader, on the NVMe drive, it's not compatible with all slots that you may want to install it in. So being able to actually put on your own is nice. They're not gonna perform nearly as well as a standard integrated one, but hey, they actually have a nice little branded one. It's gold, it's got their name on it. So I think that's pretty cool. It's not just like the very generic aluminum black ones that you normally see. So that's actually kind of cool. And the drive itself is also pretty. They have a really nice job on the label here. and not too much information. All of the cells are on the front, so the back is completely flat, which is nice. That also um, helps with compatibility because certain drives won't fit in places if there are uh, chips on the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and peel back the label here and see if we can check our controller, maybe the uh, DRAM cache and maybe the brand of the actual cells themselves. So this sticker is actually a lot thicker than most of the other stickers. If you could see here, it's got, it's got quite a bit, it's a very thick sticker. So I think that also might be doing a, maybe a little bit of uh, thermal work there. So let's see if we can see the branding on here. I may have to take pictures instead. Yeah, this sticker's really on there. So we've got some model information there. We've got our controllers. Now, I believe this is the same controller and DRAM cache that the Yoda Master had, the MAP1602. So that's kind of cool. I don't know what brand the actual memory chips are, um, but if I can figure that out, I'll put it on the screen here. But you can see the texturing on this sticker is quite, quite intense. So the quality of this build is actually pretty good. Um, let's see if the sticker sits down nicely. And um, with that, let me go ahead, do some Googling, and I will go ahead and get this installed into our PC. So before we get into the computer, let's quickly review the specs of the Oracle IG740 Pro. It's advertised as having 3D TLC NAND flash. It is using a Gen 4x4 PCIe interface. It has a DRAM cache, and it's using the MAP1602 controller. Its TBW rating is 1200 terabytes. Its advertised sequential reads is 7,400 megabits per second. And its advertised sequential writes is 6,500 megabits per second. It's also listed as having a five year warranty. As always, there will be links down in the description below if you wanna check out the IG740 Pro for yourself. And those will be affiliate links. So if you do use them, they do support the channel. So unfortunately in my motherboard, uh, the M.2 slot that is Gen 4, since this is a PCIe Gen 4 drive, it's the one behind the GPU. So I had to pull the GPU out to do all of this, but we're gonna go ahead and get this slotted in there. And again, what I mentioned before about the 
heat shield being separate is really handy here because my motherboard comes with its own heat shield for the M.2, so we don't need that secondary one that Orco includes with the drive. This is a little difficult to do with microphones and stuff in the way, but we'll get it going. And I could put this cover on top, but I'm not going to because I'm going to have to take this drive out again. Anyways, we'll leave that off and uh, we'll get the computer booted. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and initialize our drive. Um, because if we go ahead and go to our file explorer, we can see that our secondary drive is not here. So we're going to go ahead and go to Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. And it should automatically prompt us to initialize the drive. And here we are, so it's asking us to initialize the drive. We're gonna do a GPT, uh, it's gonna be the disk one, and should not take very long at all. Now, once that's done, we can go ahead and create our partition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click here, new simple volume, we're gonna do the full size, it'll be letter D, and let's go ahead and name this one so that we know. I'm gonna call this one the Orico IG740, just for my own uh, thing. We'll do a pro. We'll do a quick format, even though you really don't need to do that with a brand new drive. It doesn't really take very long, so there's no point in unchecking it. We're gonna press next and finish. And now, as we can see, our Orico IG740 Pro is here. So now we can go ahead and do our testing. All right, so now let's quickly do a real world test. We're just gonna copy this file, Lord of the Rings, over from my main OS drive to the Orico drive, and it's 52 gigs, so let's see how this speed uh, looks like. So two and a half plus gigs, so that's pretty good. And with one file, I don't think we're going to saturate the cache, so it should stay around there for the whole copy process. So 52 gigs in under like, you know, 10, 15 seconds is pretty good. If we go ahead and copy this drive within the actual drive itself, let's see if those speeds change so that it's not factoring in the speed between the two different physical drives. And it's about the same. Overall, pretty impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this drive up to around 60%, and we'll go ahead and do more tests. And then after that, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my uh, synthetic test with the drive empty. And then we'll go ahead and fill up the drive to about 66%, check the speeds again like we just did, and then we'll do a synthetic test at the 66% fill as well. All right, so let's go ahead and do a larger copy of items that would surpass the cache and kind of see if, it's, if it slows down at all. So let's go ahead and grab these. It's gonna total just under 500 gigs. Copy that. And as we get close to the end here, we can see that it's basically hovered in this 600 to maybe 750 megabits per second speed after it filled up the cache. So not terrible, but it is a pretty significant reduction in overall speed. So if we look at our test results, the drive performs pretty well. We can see that there's a significant drop in the random read and writes, which is somewhat normal, although some of the random reads are quite a bit lower than I would have expected, but we'll compare this to the other drives in one moment on a graph. Once we go up to the 66%, there isn't too much of a difference in terms of the speeds, which is good to see. Overall, it seems to be relatively consistent, although 
there are some relative drops. These are just one run each. So it could just be a little bit of a variance there. Nothing overly significant. And as we saw, when you're copying a large amount of data, once you surpass the cache size, it did significantly drop in terms of overall speed. So that is something to keep in mind. So if we look at our table results, we can see that the Oracle drive is actually doing quite well compared to a lot of the others. In some situations, it is surpassing the others and in other situations, it's falling a little bit behind. But overall, it's really gonna be dependent on the pricing of these drives at your time of purchase as to which one you're gonna be choosing as well as what you're gonna be using it for. I talked about this in the Yoda Master review, but with these more new drives that are coming out and we don't really know their overall endurance, you know, the teams are listing a rated endurance, but we don't know how that's actually gonna work out in the long run. So I personally wouldn't be using a lot of these as a main OS drive, but they are really, really great as a secondary drive for all of your content, your games, stuff like that. They're gonna be a really good choice for that. Again, I, I wouldn't personally choose these yet for a main OS drive because they are new to market. And I just don't like the idea of putting information that I'd rather not lose on a drive that I don't know too much about yet. But if we look at the sequential, overall, it does a pretty good job. And then same thing here with the random, it is keeping up with a lot of the other drives like the Yoda Master, like even the uh, WD Black SN770, all these drives are doing quite well. There is a lot of really random results here and it's hard for me to go back and test all of them because I do not have all these drives currently on me to do these re to do the retesting. So this is these are some older results, but we can see here that the Oracle is performing pretty well overall and I'm pretty impressed with its overall performance. So now let's go ahead and compare the specs that we were looking at earlier with a lot of the other drives here. And the Orco is doing quite well. It shares a lot of similarities with the Yoda Master Y7000 Pro. They're both using the same controller. They both have the same advertised um, terabytes written. So that's very interesting to see as well. Regular price, the Oracle is about $160, which puts the pricing at about eight cents per gigabyte, which is quite good. On sale though, you can currently get it all the way down to $120, which brings that down to six cents per gigabyte, which again, almost par on par with what the Yoda Master pricing is. So do keep that one in mind. Pricing is quite good though. Anything below 10 cents per gigabit is pretty good overall. I'm pretty impressed with that. And it being a Gen 4x4 TLC drive overall, I am actually quite impressed with this pricing. They're doing a really good job providing a lot of value here and you get that five-year warranty. So that's also really nice to see. And to wrap things up, I think this is a fantastic value drive. It's gonna be great as a secondary drive, whether it's gonna be for content, like I would use it for video editing, for example, or you can use it as a really great game drive. You can put a lot of content on here and you can basically put anything that you would wanna keep on your main OS drive on here, it's gonna perform really well, especially if you have that Gen 4x4 PCIe slot. I think this provides tons of value. If it is truly a TLC drive, I wasn't able to confirm the NAND, I wasn't able to do any search ups on the part numbers that were there. So I can't confirm if it's TLC or QLC. They are advertising it as TLC though, and if that is truly the case, it is a really great value at that $160 price point or even $120 on sale. I think Oracle is doing a really good job providing a lot of value. And if these drives pro prove to be as well rated in terms of endurance as they say they are, then I think this is a really great drive to have around. And time's gonna tell, you know, it's a brand new drive. They're brand new to the storage market overall. So it is gonna be interesting to see, but I'm super happy. You're getting a really good deal. And so far it's performing extremely well. With all that said though, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any other videos where I talk about reviews, especially ones on NVMe drives, you can check out the playlist right up here. 
And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.